Welcome, everyone. We have a very special guest today. Um, Anthony Jensted is the president of Firefly LLC. Firefly LLC is an international distribution partner for the recovery product called Firefly, which was launched in the U.S. in 2016. For the last eight years, Anthony has, and his growing team have navigated the NCAA and pro athletic training rooms, educating athletic trainers, strength conditioning coaches, and sports scientists on the use of this novel recovery tool, which was actually not initially developed for recovery at all. Firefly and its medical counterpart, the Gecko, have taken different approaches in increasing blood flow by stimulating the nervous system with modified NMAS signal that is significant to the perineal nerve. Unlike any technology on the market and patent protected, Firefly is fast becoming the primary go-to recovery product across the NCAA and pro sports with a focus on international markets. So, Anthony, thank you so much for joining us today in the Athletic Training Room. It's great to have you. How are you? Doing amazing, yeah. Uh, things are things are good for us. Um, you know, knock on wood, seem to get better every day. Um, so, yeah, we're in, the, I think, that good part of the journey in uh, a company. Um, you know, we I, I have to tell my team often, like, please enjoy this side of, of the business. You know, double-digit growth. Um, we're hitting our quotas easily. Um, you know, we're actually paying everybody a salary. So yeah, we're, we're in a good space right now. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, like I said, it's great to have you. We really appreciate you support the athletic training room, athletic trainers everywhere. Uh, we, we, I know a lot of us, uh, use your product on a regular basis and, and have had a lot of success with it. Um, can you provide me just, we talked a little bit about it in the intro, but can you provide kind of in your own words, just kind of an overview of, of, Firefly recovery and um, the device itself, um, yeah. and kind of how it works and everything like that, and the and the reasons behind it. Yeah. So my background's orthopedic medical device, and I think that's a good place to start. Um, I never was involved. I was involved in the athletic training room, working with athletic trainers. Um, I started off as a Donjoy rep. Um, so you know, knew athletic trainers well. A big portion of my business worked with orthopedic surgeons. Um, always looking for new innovation. Um, there was about eight years ago, physicians in the medical world were starting to do total joints in their ambulatory surgery centers. And one of the big things that they were worrying about um, was DVT prophylaxis to the home. Um, the standard of care in the medical world is pneumatic sequential compression. They put these devices around their ankles and they're usually in the hospital for a day or two post-operative and they, they want them to have those on 24 seven. Well, when they were discharging them from the surgery centers straight to the home, um, and they were also at the same time taking their patients off of pharmacological um, DVT prophylaxis and really going down to a, like a low dose aspirin and things like that. They were looking for just kind of an additional barrier for their patients on the DVT side. Um, and so they challenged me because I was a DME provider uh, out on the West Coast. And I literally, as simply as this, went to my computer, Google searched portable wearable DVT prophylaxis. And this technology popped up on my screen based out of Europe a company called First Kind Medical, and they had come at DVT prophylaxis from a completely different angle. Instead of stimulating, or excuse me, squeezing the lower extremity, pneumatic compression, they actually found out that they could modify a muscle stim signal to, to stimulate the nervous system to increase arterial and venous flow, prevent stasis, and therefore prevent a blood clot. Um, so that's how I found the technology, uh, always truly intended for the medical world. Um, I, I launched an email campaign to the founders and tracked them down and said, I need your product in my world. And, uh, we developed a relationship over a period of about six months. And I eventually became the U S distributor for the medical version of the product, um, which along with it came the firefly. And they're like, Oh, by the way, um, the same technology, we developed an over-the-counter version of it. It does the exact same thing um, for the most part. And uh, physical therapists in Europe started using it and, and actually researched it. And they found that it helped with recovery. Well, what do you think about carrying this product as well? And I was like, well, it's kind of a natural fit. I talk to athletic trainers all the time. I'm doing the bracing inside the clinics and the training rooms. Um, so let me go talk to them. So uh, I had the privilege of knowing... Uh, you know, the head guys at USC, the Lakers, the Clippers, the Ducks, the Kings. I brought them the technology and I said, hey, guys, what do you think, guys and girls? And they said, um, 
this is freaking amazing if this really does what it says it does. And that kind of started my uh, journey. Uh, and interestingly enough, my journey is mostly Firefly now. It is not the medical device, even though I still do uh, a little bit with that. I've really um, kind of trailblazed Firefly and and built it into something where it's taken most of my, my time. So that's kind of the background of the technology developed to prevent a blood clot. I know it's a long, a long way to get there. Um, but that similar technology, obviously increasing circulation uh, in a multitude of ways helps with athletes from a recovery standpoint, travels a big thing for athletes. Um, and, and, you know, I think we're a unique modality because we kind of do multiple things, but we're very simple technology, but we're effective across a, a lot of different buckets. So our journey has really been education, right? Um, I've been a DME rep my whole life. I carried muscle stem. I carried TENS units. I've heard about PEMF technology in like bone stem. So I kind of always knew these different electrical signals and kind of their value, but had never really had to learn why our technology is different, why we look like stem, but we function more like pneumatic compression and having to get that that uh messaging to everybody right uh um i have to do that in the medical world uh with the orthos and i had to do it in the athletic training room with the athletic trainers and that's kind of been our journey um but as we've fine-tuned that messaging over the last eight years um it's almost become embarrassingly good every day for us because as it's getting adopted people are coming back to us and saying hey did you know you could use it for this? Did you know you could use it for this? Did you know you, and we were like, we don't really want to know, like, you know, only put it at the knee, only put it at the perineal nerve. But anyways, it's been a cool journey. Um, but that's kind of the foundation of the technology. Never, never really intended to chase this recovery thing we're all talking about now. Sure. But I think that's a great segue. What you just mentioned is, is carrying muscle stem and, and things of that. And if she's athletic trainers, we carry modalities all the time, right. And, and on the road and big hefty stuff. And we're always looking for new, better ways to, to help our athletes recover. And not just because it's the cool thing or the hip thing or the new thing, just because it, it works better because we're data driven and, and evidence-based um, and, and coming from a pneumatic compression solution to this nerve stimulation solution. Can you talk a little bit about one, how exactly that works as far as you talk about stimulating the, the perineal nerve, how yep. does that work with the one from the DVC side? Like how do they discover that like a little bit more detail there? And then also like a big question I get from lay responders is, or from lay people in general is, is how is this different than a TENS unit? Cause I can stimulate, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm getting that and, and they hear, electrical stimulation and they instantly think tens unit or some sort of muscle stim how does it differ there and why is firefly superior to something like that yeah so um i think i know a lot but i still don't know a lot about nmes and tens units right i i i, I can speak specifically to stimulating the nervous system um tens to me is my left thumb hurts but if i hit my right thumb then my right thumb hurts now, but I forgot my left thumb hurts, right? So that's, a, you know, TENS is kind of a trickery of signaling to the brain, right? So that kind of pushes that aside. It's it's really for pain management, right? Sure. Um, NMES is traditionally used for muscle re-ed, right? And you can only do it in small excerpts of time because you're fatiguing a muscle, right? Because you're directly stimulating those muscle fires and firing them directly. And you've got a limited time frame you can do that. And I know the Compex or the Mark Crow guys could do a much better job of talking about reverse waveforms and why Compex can be worn longer and blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know, um, you know, why they differentiate them and what which one's better than the other. Um, our specifically was um, the UK uh, company found really somebody at a clinical level in, in a college uh, had figured out if they modified and squared off, uh, I hope that means something to you guys, uh, the end of a signal on an NMES uh, signal that they could actually comfortably stimulate the nerve of the perineal nerve specifically. Well, if you think about that nerve, it goes from the hip to the toe and it goes all the way down into the feet. And when you, when you 
you know, when you put our technology over that nerve and we put it at the knee, which we'll talk about as well, also sometimes confuses people because they think we're a knee product because you, you put us at the knee, but really it's to locate the perineal nerve, which wraps around the fibular head, goes down into the foot. So we can kind of all find that nerve right at the fibular head. And that's why you put the firefly there. But when you take our pulse and it's called the on pulse technology and you stipulate that nerve, you actually get a dorsiflexion of the foot. Mm -hmm. And most people would think you'd want to fire the gastroc to get blood flow, right? But what it actually does is it triggers the two anterior muscles across your shin. And it, and it basically, in essence, the way I describe it is it pinches the lower extremity system and pushes the blood through the deep vein of the calf back to, you know, back into the, the heart faster. So by getting this pulse every second, you're getting this dorsiflexion of the foot and in an instance, this thrust of blood every second. And they figured that by mod by stimulating the nerve first and, and which ultimately is firing the muscle, but it's not firing the muscle fibers, it's firing the nerve. You don't get muscle fatigue. So these units are used on medical patients 24 hours a day, seven, eight, 10 days in a row in the OR, um, you know, in the recovery, in the stroke wards, et cetera, for an alternative to, to DVT prophylaxis. Um, and in, in your world, um, you really can't take these Compex and Mark Pro if you try it and you put it on the perineal nerve, it's actually painful. Mm -hmm. um, so we're a different signal specifically focused on the nervous system specifically really just trying to pump blood out of your lower extremity, get it back to your heart faster, um, which has a lot of additional side effects that are very effective in your athletic training, whether it's recovery, you know, increasing circulation, uh, whether, uh, you know, we've got reported like ankle sprain reduction within 24 hours because you're pumping the venous system, right? And you're just getting rid of all the bad stuff. Um, so I technically can't say edema, but I can say we're removing, you know, waste or whatever, because I can't be a medical product unless I'm the gecko. Um, but the firefly really does kind of the same thing. Um, so I hope I answered your question there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate yeah. it. No, that's, that's, that's great. Um, and, and I think, I think people hear, uh, of, when they hear the product and they hear blood flow and then they hear, you know, recovery, it, it's almost, sometimes it, it's, it's almost counterintuitive in a way. Um, and what I mean by that is, especially when you talk about the ankle strain, strain example, we hear increased blood flow and we hear in, inflammation, edema, we hear, you know, swelling, we hear, oh my gosh, inflammatory process. Right. And, and yeah. so, so are there, are there contraindications to this as far as like, uh, immediate injury because of that increase of blood flow, or is this something you can use pretty much right away? Yeah. I mean, there's no contraindications I'm aware of. The only contraindications on our IFU are current DVT. Um, and a, yeah. yeah. And an on-demand pacemaker. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's challenging as you, you know, it's, it's an interesting, um, I'm not a doctor. I just play one at work. Right. Um, I've been in medical device for 27, 28 years. So I think I know a lot about a lot. Um, you know, it's interesting when we have our naysayers or our challengers to our product, um, and, and I show them a before and after of an ankle sprain, uh, that was reduced at least edema, edema wise or swelling wise, right. They'll challenge me and we'll say, well, a swelling's good, you know, because it helps the process. And, and I, I always kind of just go back to, well, you're throwing the kitchen sink at it to get rid of swelling. I happen to be super effective on my own, you know, without throwing everything else at it to, to reduce that 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 aggressively um and i again i shouldn't be saying swelling i should be saying uh uh Base. circulation <laughs> or, or whatever um but um you know i don't i still don't think we're stabilizing the ankle right we're just kind of getting we're, we're pushing blood out getting rid of the bad stuff bringing in the good stuff which is going to hopefully in my understanding of science going to bring better you know it's going to heal it faster you know and we've got a lot of reports from the like nba players that they'll get back three, four, five days early, mm -hmm. uh, from it for, you know, and when you think about the cost of an athlete sitting on the sideline versus being on, you know, and I don't know how you equate that in the college level or the high school level, but everybody wants their athlete back quicker. They also want to bring them back at a safe level. Right. Um, you know, 
a lot of times I tell people, and this is really hard for higher end athletic training rooms where they want to make sure they're doing everything they can. So they've got a secret sauce that they were raised with in their community. And I'm like, well, don't do any of that and just use this and and give me 30 hours. Right. And they're like, ah, it's just so hard, you know, cause they want to do everything else. Right. Um, right. But we've, you know, the, the feedback has been tremendous. Uh, uh, you know, so again, you know, increasing circulation, I guess I would push it back to you from a modality standpoint, you know, from recovery, um, what are the go-to modalities out there? I mean, you know, the interesting I'm finding in recovery and I'm learning every day is we're all speaking about recovery, but what are the athletes really doing for recovery and, and who's the educator in the athletic training room on recovery, is it strength and conditioning? They're actually trained from my understanding on, on recovery, but we're a modality. So we're a medical modality. So usually we don't fit well with strength and conditioning. We're more of an athletic training product, but we're recovery. Does that live with the athletic trainer? I don't know. Some places it does, some places it doesn't, you know, we're trying to figure out this journey. Right. And then when we talk to the consumer, we think, wow, they know recovery is a big thing and they actually do, but they don't do anything for it. You mm -hmm. know, you ask somebody, I was just at the Boston run show and with a bunch of elite people training for the Boston marathon and their recovery modalities are, I ice my knees after I run, I stretch, I, you know, they're really not a lot of, 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 you know, so I think it comes back to, you know, how are we educating our athletes on what recovery is? And I think what I'm educating myself is it's sleep, nutrition, increasing circulation with some modality. Right. Um, and it's, it's an algorithm of that. Um, and it's timed. When do you do it? When, when, you know, when, you know, is it truly recovery a day now anymore? Is it a day you completely take off or is recovery to me? I think it's a bank account. And you constantly put money in it when you don't need the money. So if I'm, you know, we get a lot of, when I was at the Boston Run Show again, you know, we we're like, well, people would be like, oh, this is going to be great. I'll wear these after I run the Boston Marathon. And I'm like, you should be wearing them as you're training for the Boston Marathon, right? <laughs> as you're increasing your miles from eight to 10 to 12 or whatever your progression is. I'm not a runner. I don't know those things, but you should be filling the recovery bucket as you're getting to the marathon and yeah, you should wear us immediately after the marathon. Cause you know, you should wear them four hours at the marathon. So you feel good the next day, but you should be filling that bucket. And I still think that's the lost messaging of recovery. I think there's a lot to learn. I have a lot to learn uh, about it, but I think we're all talking about it, but I don't know that anybody's figured out the exact algorithm of how to tell these athletes what to do. Right. Yeah, and I, and I think there's there's something to be said for that for sure because we talk about the you talk about the bucket and refilling the bucket. We talk about that all the time, both in the athletic training and the strength and conditioning world. Both just yeah. as far as sports nutrition goes, and we're not just refueling after or refueling. It's a continuum, right? I mean, we're 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 keeping the bucket full instead of getting so much to a deficit that now we have to take two or three days off and recover from it. And, and, yeah. and I, there's, there's absolute credence to the fact what you're saying is, as far as leading up to the event, keeping it at as high of a level as you can, because then you don't have to recover as much at the end. You're probably going to need it after two, but yeah. I mean, it, it's it recovery to me is a continuum. It, everything that I've preached to my athletes over, over the years has been, prevention is the best treatment. And, and so that's kind of what we're talking about here is, is we're ultimately keeping at a level where we're preventing the need for extensive recovery over yeah. a period of time. Well, I think we all think that. And then every <laughs> At least that's what, we're hoping, to, that's what we're hoping for. And, <laughs> and then every meeting I go to you guys is, you know, and, and sports scientist <laughs> meetings and all that. And at the end of the day, there's no research that actually points to a better recovered athlete is a less injured athlete. Right. But I think right. we all theoretically think that way. Um, you know, we just, I think there's a lot of perceived common sense to it, right? Like the more you're taking care of yourself, the more apt you're less, you're not going to get that, 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 that injury that we know as a result of a fatiguing athlete. Um, 
And I think blood flow is a big part of that. And then when I look around your modality bucket and I say, well, what modalities would I compete with in your, in, you know, what, what's a better modality than mine for recovery, you know, for blood flow. I just don't see one. And I'm not saying, Hey, we're the end all be all, but you know, I've got teams that say, Hey, you know what? We spend 50 bucks an athlete on a massage. Well, that's a one time increased circulation. The athlete feels good, but you can buy a firefly for less than that and get a month of increased circulation out of that. Yeah. Your athlete's not going to be happy. They didn't get a massage, but like, where do you, you know, what, what, modalities or what things do you offer your athlete that, you know, the, the, the best thing that I've seen about our product is it gets your athlete. It, it gives them a tool that they can actually use. I, I think a lot of times I just trained, you know, coach put us through a great workout. I can't go sit in your locker room in the corner, plugged into a wall to a pneumatic compression device. Um, there's only so many athletic trainers and they're going to give priority to the injured athletes. So if I'm reco- if I'm in good shape and I just need recovery, is there something that I can do in my dorm room, in my, you know, et cetera. And then when you think about travel and I look at like um, conference realignments and stuff like that, and who knows what, how that's going to help, you know, hurt the, the, the uh, college athlete. But I mean, we all know circulation at altitude in a plane is good, right? I mean, I just actually read a study, I'll send it to you, that said reducing inflammation at altitude will actually even help with jet lag, right? So we're not just talking recovery, we're talking reducing inflammation uh, through nutrition, right? Um, Actually is a part of reducing uh, uh, jet lag. Well, if I'm reducing inflammation systemically, why wouldn't I also be a part of not only just making your athlete feel better when they land, they're going to feel, you know, fresh legs, more able to compete, but they're also potentially, and again, I'm reaching here, but if we're reducing inflammation, why aren't we maybe reducing the effect of a five hour flight? Right. Um, I think blood flow does a lot of cool stuff. I don't see a lot of modalities that are more convenient than ours, do a better job than ours and, um, and are just, more adaptable to situations outside the training athletic training room during travel and on the road, right? Like when you you have a makeshift athletic training room, we're an easy modality to pull out of the backpack and slap on your athlete and say, Hey, go, go to your room and get your homework done or go play video games or whatever these kids do nowadays. (laughs) Lucky guys. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Right. To bring in stuff with them on the road. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot obviously about, um, the college athlete, the pro athlete, a, a big percentage of our the athletic trainers in the athletic training room in our, in our group are, are high school athletic trainers, secondary school settings. Um, yeah. and, and and so is is this something? I guess two two full question again. Is it something that that you've had a lot of success with the high school athlete as far as being able to use either in schools or, or anything like that? And have you had any kind of pushback from? high school administration or anybody having a device like that on in, in, in the classroom or throughout the day. Cause this is something, obviously you want a plane, you can wear it throughout the high school day. It's a same yeah, yeah. time, right? Yeah. And so oh. like pre, pre-workout versus post and, and being able to wear it in the high schools, has there been any kind of complications with that? Or has, has it been a similar level of success uh, with those secondary school athletes as it has been getting in into the collegiate and professional athletic training? Yeah, we haven't thrown a ton of effort into it. Our really first eight years has been where we knew the money was, right? Like uh, somebody could pay for it. So pro sports, college sports uh, really started at Division One, um, and then, you know, started to go to the D2 meetings wherever we could, the coaches meetings. I mean, you know, we're always just trying to figure out how to get our messaging to the right person. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I had high school athletes that were also, I'm based out of Southern California. So, you know, we're all crazy about our athletes and we have our kids in club sports and and all that. And I know there's an unlimited amount of money in there, maybe sometimes more than at a college level uh, in some instances. Um, and everybody's looking for an edge. Um, you know, uh, I remember my daughter uh, would go on volleyball tournaments, you know, in Colorado and to Vegas, and they play seven, eight, nine, ten games on a weekend if right. they made it through. Right. And what are these kids doing for recovery? Um, they're drinking sodas and, you know, sitting around between games, not moving. Right. Um, I think this is a great tool for that. 
Um, you, we have had tons of high schools reach out and buy actually surprisingly. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, sometimes high schools have more of a budget than some D threes <laughs> and D twos, honestly. I mean, we've some th seen some things out of Texas and we're blown away, um, by that, you know, as far as, uh, any negative indication for use? No, really nothing. No, you know, you know, it's kind of a, it almost has too many uses for the simpleness of it. Um, so I try to stay in my lane of recovery, recovery with travel. Maybe if you heard, you know, the ankle thing that I wasn't supposed to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good little modality. I mean, uh, we're going to come out with some reg regulatory stuff here pretty soon. I think where we'll be able to kind of dip a little closer into that bucket. I mean, and, and, and I, I would ask you when you're an athletic trainer on the sidelines of a, uh, high school basketball do you have like in a little emergency bag for things like sprain strain stuff like that kind of what's the go-to mechanism if a kid sprains his ankle um or gets a thigh contusion or something like that what do you what do you immediately do yeah yeah immediate uh i, mean, I guess it depends but i think the biggest thing is in game obviously is um you know, pain management and functionality and then, and are we going to continue to play or not? And if we yeah. you know, make the determination that they're not playing anymore, I, I, to be honest with you, the, 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 the quick immediate answer, especially in the first 30 minutes, because, and there are re, there's research around this and we can get into this for a different time. No, I'd love to hear it. Uh, yeah. With the ice, with the ice conversation. I mean, yeah. and, and are we icing, are we not icing and, and the battle there. And my philosophy has been, if it's an immediate thing or if it's a pain management thing, that ice is, is good. But at yeah. this time, as an athletic trainer, you're trying to do something for for your yeah. athlete to make them comfortable, or you know, so you don't want to just deny everything. And so, yeah, I mean, ice, I guess, and then compression after the fact, right? And yeah. you, set home, you you do either uh, an open basket, let's say it's an ankle sprain, you do an open basket weave and or a, an ace wrap uh, compression up to as far as you can with you know your typical no gaps and and push. You're trying to push swelling out as much as possible. I mean, yes, swelling is good, but you don't want it to be a balloon yeah. where it's not functional because pitting it yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. And so, so you're you're basically managing inflammation to a point to minimize tissue damage and cell damage at the end. That's that's the ultimate goal. And so any way that we can find, regardless of the level to do that, I mean, it, that should be a, a staple, in my opinion, across the board as far as an uh, immediate treatment of an injury and, and really recovery in general. When we start talking about recovery, um, it, it's it comes down to, to to cell damage and cell death and how how can we minimize or mitigate the risk of that so yeah. that's a long answer to a short so <laughs> my team was thinking about this like 2 days ago it's so interesting we we're talking about this so there's 98,000 high schools in the country US and we're like okay everybody should have at least two fireflies in their emergency pack right right <laughs> at least right we're talking basketball and then if you went across sports i like get basketball volleyball whatever like like we'd be a pretty big business if we just had two fireflies in the emergency pack right um but yeah i mean high school i do see eventually um that these trends that we see come from the top down right they come from elite sport and then everybody who wants to be at that level which every american seems to think their kid is going to be at that level i included in that um i didn't ever think my kids were going to be you know lebron james but i i thought they had a shot at maybe some form of a college you know living vicariously through them and i was giving them every tool i could um including this tool um and I think that'll happen eventually. I mean, we're we're in a lot of those places now, and people are talking about us. And I think eventually, you know, will a will a high school buy the same amount as you know University of Alabama? Probably not. But I think you know it could easily be a conversation with the booster, like, hey, thirty five bucks a kid for for four months in the season. You know, that's you know one hundred and twenty bucks a, a head, and you get a tool for recovery, recovery with travel. And I, I do think we'll find our way into that space. I mean, that's our dream. That's our goal. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just one conversation at a time, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah. and you the different sports and putting a, in, a, in an emergency kit, are there, are there certain sports or athlete types, um, 
basketball versus track versus baseball and softball versus football that you've seen either more use or more success with this over time from from the collegiate or from the from the pro and olympic ranks all the way down yeah. to, to the high school is there is there a group that you find either uses this more or has had more success with it i think that's kind of a i, I want to say an unfair because it's your question it, it's it's really budget <laughs> Right. And and I call them the money sports. Unfortunately, they have money in college. It's college football and basketball. So that's where it starts. And then it kind of bleeds to everywhere else. But as far as athletes, no, I mean, we are successful in with every athlete. I mean, I think our biggest Achilles heel, if we have one, is if the athletic trainer or the person delivering the firefly doesn't educate the athlete hey, this is going to feel like STEM, but it's going to function more like maybe other modalities you're used to, but it's more effective if they believe that. I believe that. So I would say that. And it's it's more conducive to their lifestyle because they can fit it in um, in times when maybe they're not around the athletic trainer or the athletic training room, et cetera. It's going to help with travel. It's going to help keep that bucket full of, of recovery. If we can help a youth athlete find that that's important. And and I do believe a lot do. And I do believe a, a lot don't. I mean, I see it sometimes in, I'm in the NBA, like the older players will gravitate to Firefly more than the younger guys. Cause they're a little bit more like, I, you know, I don't need those things. Right. Um, but I think when you see LeBron investing a million dollars and going to how much far he's going in his career and, and all these athletes, I think these people are now understanding like, Hey, I gotta, I gotta take care of myself through the, the journey. If I can make an extra paycheck or an extra year or an extra season. Right. Um, I think recovery is still in its infancy. And when you're in the business of recovery, you think everybody knows about it. Um, <laughs> but then when you actually, um, you get to the, you know, you get to speak to the athletes. We're still not in the back of their mind. I mean, you know, we're, we're really not. Um, but so I think we got a lot of road ahead of us. You know, I think it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, I'm a 54, four year old guy trying to stay as youthful as I can. And man, I'm telling you, I'm trying every trick in the book, right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm doing things like, you know, got to have my three vitamin, you know, magnesiums before I go to bed. I got to, you know, have my infrared sauna, you know, <laughs> I've got a like, Oh yeah, now I got, it's cool to, you know, dip in my pool at 49 degrees for th four minutes. I'm going to do that. Like, you know, I'm trying it all. So uh, I do think the, world is expanding to longevity and recovery. Um, but I still think it's still in its infancy. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, is this going to hurt me? No. Okay. Well, let's, let's try it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. What's it going to hurt? What's the worst that's going to happen? Nothing. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, completely understand. I think there's something to be said for placebo, but it, when you have the science to back it, I think that that's even better. I mean, we talked about a lot of the research that's come out of Europe and stuff starting this out and, and the, the data driven. I mean, obviously we're a, uh, an evidence-based profession. So I, that, that's huge for us. Um, you know, a couple more questions. The first, obviously we're kind of related to that. And you mentioned earlier, you guys have some stuff coming out um, here, here shortly without saying too much about what you can or can't, can't say um what kind yeah. of research do you guys are you guys doing any kind of new research or anything like that that we can be looking forward to as a community um from a data-driven and evidence-based perspective yeah it's interesting um so the cool thing is we're not afraid of research right because yeah. we know our product works it's a medical product yeah. right it's fda approved right for dvt prevention edema reduction wound healing on the medical side right so we know increasing circulation does a lot of cool stuff um so you got this over the counter product that has all this medical research and you know we run into a lot of 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 professionals in your field that want us to validate right even though we're in multiple institutions and stuff we kind of show them the research um and uh they're like nope you know it's done in europe or you know this or that or or whatever and so they want to research our product more and so we're we're actively open to anything. And we've actually had uh, University of Maryland's doing some research for us right now, really for them. They, they came to us and said, hey, we want to, we've seen the value. We want to kind of extend this. And um, so there's a lot of preliminary stuff, nothing that in my mind sticks out like 
um, you know, that we're funding. Cause again, if you fund something, then it's poo pooed anyways. Right. So <laughs> we're like, Hey, we'll, we'll support it in every way that it doesn't make a negative to the, to the, uh, to the outcome. Right. Um, and it's usually just product. Right. Um, and then we kind of let them set the parameters of the research, but yeah, some good stuff. And the preliminary stuff is kind of stuff we already know, like the athletes are recovering and perform, you know, a more recovered athlete re performs better on game day. Mm -hmm. If you, if you, train during the week and you don't do anything for recovery, you're going to have a fatigued athlete that's not going to perform as good on Sunday or Monday or whatever their day is. And if you fill the recovery bucket, they perform better. They jump higher. They run faster. They, they feel better. Um, I still don't think I've seen anything that says they're less injured. Um, but I, I get that all the time. I was just on a call with somebody from, uh, the Phillies, it, it was actually indirectly through the Phillies. And they said, oh yeah, they've told me they use Firefly and they had less injuries last year. I think that's all anecdotal, right? Like no, they don't, they didn't do any preliminary research, but, um, so we've got a, a, a lot of people coming to us. They want to continue to compare us against pneumatic compression and, and measure, you know, blood flow, which we already have those measurements. So we don't right. really need them again, but if they want to do them on us soil, so they feel better about it, um, you know, we'll, we'll do that. Um, yeah, nothing. Uh, the big thing that we're trying to fund ourselves is we know stimulating the perineal nerve pushes blood from the lower extremity back to the heart faster, increases circulation. It's been theorized if we have a positive effect on the nervous system in the lower extremity, if we did it in the upper extremity on one of the nerves of the elbow, whether it's the ulna or the uh, radial nerve, would we have a microcirculatory positive effect for like return to play pitchers and catchers? Right. Um, right. Anecdotally, probably over half the MLB is doing that or more. Um, and we get pretty much, we can't even post pictures on our, uh, Instagram of elbow application because we're not FDA approved for it. But <laughs> right. literally we get tons of people like my athletes feel amazing. You're like, well, we can't, we can't tell anybody. I don't know what you're talking uh, about. <laughs> um, yeah, we can't tell anybody. Um, but that is probably where we're going to lean to spend our money is uh, research on upper extremity. Um, and then secondly, we always get challenged that we're not reusable. Um, and I think you, your community will understand we're, we're an electrode based product, you're yep. going to always have to replace electrode. So I can be a rechargeable product, but I'm always going to be a replaceable electrode product. So we are going to work on that. Um, it's interesting because the same community that wants that probably wouldn't buy it from us, right? Like if, you know, if I'm got a $35 Firefly that will last your athlete a month or a $300 Firefly, you know, rechargeable, where are you going to really give that to your athlete? Because you don't trust them, right? <laughs> so so it's it's kind of interesting. Everybody kind of wants it, but nobody really wants to buy it. Um, that'll probably be a consumer-facing product. Um, we also do a lot in the military with like the Navy SEALs, et cetera. They don't want a smart product. They don't want it to talk back to them. They don't want to talk to their watch. And they don't want to talk to anybody else. And they don't want an expensive device. So, you know... 80% of our sales, well, it's probably actually now 50-50 consumer athletic training room. 50% doesn't really probably ever going to buy that. It'll probably be more of a consumer thing. Like if you ever saw us on Best Buy on a shelf, it would probably be some form of a rechargeable technology, but they'd still have to buy new electrodes. So we'll, we'll put some research money in that as well. Um, but we feel like we have enough m research to validate what we're saying right now. So. Sure. Um, we're not trying to get more. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. The, the the elbow thing. It's so funny you mentioned that because Jake and I had. The, I was a, I, a baseball. I was a baseball for years. That was that was kind of my thing when I was in in athletic training full time. And that the first conversation Jake and I had was, "Hey, can I use this on the elbow?" Yeah. <laughs> was, well, I can't necessarily tell you you can, but no, it's it, and it's it, it's an, it was an interesting thought because it does make sense from a physiologic perspective that. Yeah, I think I ah, think right, what we're going to find is you get a it, microcirculatory it, effect across yeah. that nerve that probably does supply increased circulation. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just the out the anecdotal outcomes 
can't all be just in these athletes' heads. It's there's too much, there's too much positiveness around it to where I just I think it just makes sense. If you look at the speckle laser videos, and I'm happy to send those out to you that show it across the nerve in the lower leg, it just makes sense that that would have that same effect um on the upper extremity as well. Yeah, I mean talk about recovery and blood flow and, and a lot of that is how do you feel, right? I mean, if you feel yeah. good, you good, you play good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. fatigue is yeah. one thing and, and everything. So um yeah, yeah I think one, it, of, that's really one of the King's athletic traders told me early on, hey, if I told that guy if he painted his face blue, he'd feel one percent better, he'd paint he'd paint his, <laughs> his face blue. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, you know, sometimes it's just telling them they're going to feel yeah. better. Like um, if you rub an ice cream sandwich on this, it's going to get better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do feel, you know, <laughs> you know, the, you, you got to have more than that. But I think early on, right. Uh, you know, that's the other thing I think about recovery a lot. Like, you know, again, when you try to implement things in your life or your lifestyle, a lot of them don't take hold right away. Right. Like, okay, I'm going to reduce eating crappy food. Well, I'm still going to take me two weeks to feel good, right? Like I got to burn all the crap out of my system or whatever. The nice thing about Firefly for the most part is if you use it today, you will feel good tomorrow. Like, like you know, typically an in-tuned athlete who typically deals with maybe some soreness or some fatigue or some, you know, some, you know, leg issues, they use it in that proper dose, which I think is two hours. Um they'll feel it the next day. And and that, I think that's a great thing about feedback as well is like, this isn't take the magic pill for the next three weeks and you're going to feel great in three weeks. It's like, Hey, if you use this and you use it correctly, you're going to feel the effects of it early on. And do you see a, 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 a lasting effect of that as well? Is it, I mean, cause you, you do a <laughs> pneumatic impression, you feel great right after you feel great the next day, but then two, three days later, you're back to being sore and it doesn't, you know, just like, you know, when cupping came into vogue, okay, yeah, I feel great right after I get cupped. And then, then two days later, I'm tight again. So what like, do you see a lasting effect with that as well uh, with Firefly where no, I think you have to dose it. Yeah. I think you have okay. to dose it around training, right? I don't, I don't think like if you train today and you Firefly, you're going to feel good tomorrow. But if you train again tomorrow, you should Firefly again, you right. know, um, I always tell people like there's no negative to fire. There's no negative to increase circulation. Right. So like, you know, we, you know, we actually just got a, from the AHL in hockey, we got kind of, we always like to ask for use cases. Like, how are you guys using these things? Right. And, and we were trying to develop because our, our poor, poorest performing sport is the NHL. We're still scratching our head going, how is the NHL our, our port? They're on their skates. Like, you know, like in, 90 second increments burning it for 90 minutes in three period. Like how are they not the most fatigue athlete and how are we not doing well there? Right. Um, and, and I think it has a lot to do with the culture of hockey and tough guyism and, and whatever. I don't exactly know, or maybe just don't know anything about recovery in Canada yet, but um, you know, one of the things at the AHL level is these guys are trying to get into the NHL. So these athletes seem more determined to stay fit, say, stay recovered. And, and I mean, some of the things we get about them, they're using it kind of for pre warm up, right? Where they're doing a little stick play pr prior to going out on the ice and they got their fireflies on, you know, and then post match, they got, I mean, they're very regimented. Some of these teams on kind of their, you know, how they use and how in depth they make firefly a part of their kind of pre warm up post-training recovery, travel, et cetera. And um, it's interesting, like if I presented that to an NHL head athletic trainer, he'd look at me like I'm crazy. Like he's <laughs> never going to be able to get, he or she's never going to be able to get their professional hockey player to wear fireflies as they're warming. You know what I mean? Like, so it's interesting. I think these things just kind of take time, right? If it starts down here and you got these people who want to be at that level, um, I think we're seeing like it come through the ranks. So back to your like four questions ago, like we're, we're <laughs> sports, football, basketball, for sure. But man, track and field. I mean, those athletes are, they're like, 
they're like pretty ponies. Like they love to be, you know, they understand their bodies. They're very in tune with them. Once they implement our product, I think they see immediate impact on their performance. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I know we had a feature on uh, a quote from Galen Rupp a, a, about a week or two ago from you guys and, and how yeah. he uses it all the time. And I know he just ran, finished it, whatever it was, 18th or something in the Olympic trials down here. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I can imagine running being a big, a big part of a distance runner. Yeah, runners are, you know, what we think on the consumer side are our big, uh, you know, our, our big kind of, we're, we're chasing them. Yeah. Triathletes, obviously, they're buying $10,000 bikes. I think they'll buy a $35 Firefly <laughs> or whatever. But, um, <laughs> those type of things, right? Uh, but yeah, pretty much any athlete who buys into it and spends the time to understand it usually mm -hmm. sees value in it. Awesome. Well, that being said, last one before I let you go, I and mean, we really appreciate your time, obviously, and, and your support. Yeah, thanks for all the questions. Uh, um, wh where can somebody find uh, more about Firefly, or, or where can they, if they want to purchase it, where, where's the best place to, to purchase, purchase the device, either as an athletic trainer or as a consumer? Sure. So we're in the great spot of being big but small. Um, there's really only three of us on the sales side. There's me at the president, and we've got two salespeople, Jake uh, Wilkes, who handles college, and then uh, Conlin. Uh, um, and if you just look this up on LinkedIn and put Firefly, there's like three guys that'll pop up. Um, email any of us. Um, if you go on to our website, and there's an email on there that orders Firefly actually comes to me still. So I answer all those emails and I push them out to whoever it goes to. Um, we love to work at uh, the high school level, uh, college level in any capacity. We obviously have reduced pricing off of our website for that community. So make sure you're not buying product online. Um, if you if you have an interest in buying in units of 25 or more, we can get you a discount. We're always happy to work um, uh, with every school. Um, we want to get on zoom calls. We want to talk to your coaches. We want to, we're still in that energy side of the business where we want to be involved. You can find us on Instagram. Uh, we have a ton of NIL, uh, athletes. Um, we don't, uh, we don't pay them monetarily, but we do give them some product and some swag. Everybody loves swag. Um, we get about 200 inquiries a week, uh, and we can only pick a small percentage of those. But if you've got any kids that you think would qualify and you, you at least want to get them into understanding the product, send it in their way. We'll try to, you know, we'll try to do something with them. Uh, that's been really fun to watch. Um, and yeah, we're, uh, you know, please just reach out to us uh, in any of those capacities. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Anthony. We really appreciate your time and your support. And, uh, and what a great product. Um, really excited to to be able to present this to everybody and 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 get the word out. It'll be big. Yeah, thanks for having us uh, as part of your group. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Just move on.